Hey guys, it's Pastor Courtney, and today I'd like to talk about trusting God in the dark. There, that's better. <laughs> so good to be with you today. I thought about calling this Devo for today, trusting God in the storm. But the more I thought about it, storms and the dark are really different. You know, when a storm comes, it hits hard, it causes damage, kind of like what we saw last week, but we know sometime it'll be over right? But darkness is a little bit different. Darkness can last. We can be in a dark place for a long time. In fact, David was in a place of darkness when he wrote Psalms chapter 57. You know, at this point, David had already been anointed as the future king of Israel. He had defeated Goliath and had been faithfully serving King Saul. Unfortunately, Saul rewards David for his service and obedience with a promise to kill him. Not cool, Saul. So David is forced to run for his life. And when he writes Psalms 57, he's actually hiding out in a dark cave. Now, scripture also reveals that David wasn't hiding alone. That dark cave he was holed up in was hosting a pretty discouraging group of guys. 1 Samuel 22 describes this jolly group of 400 men as in distress, in debt, and discontented. Not exactly the uplifting, positive, can-do group of people you would hope to have with you during one of the darkest seasons of your life. You know what? I wouldn't judge David for one second if he had cried out to God in total frustration saying, I don't understand any of this. I'm leading a bunch of crazy people. We're hiding out in a cave. We don't know when we're going to get out. And I am feeling crazy and defeated and hopeless. Interestingly enough, though, The words he writes in Psalms 57 aren't totally considered a psalm of lament or a psalm of thanksgiving. But just like life, it's a little of both. You know, David doesn't deny the darkness of his situation, but he also refuses to allow his soul to get stuck in a place of darkness and despair. Let's read Psalms 57. David writes, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge. Till the storms of destruction pass by, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid fiery beasts. The children of man whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongue are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my glory. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. So we see here that David chooses. He chooses to declare praises about the true nature and character of God. He reminds his soul of who God is a God who fulfills his purpose. That's my favorite part. A God who saves, a God known for his faithfulness and his steadfast love. You know, we can see in scripture, it was a dark place that God brought David to. And that point was a turning point in his destiny. God used the darkness to draw David close to his heart and make him see that apart from God, he could do nothing. It was after that point that David was truly ready to lead the nation of Israel. All that to say, don't discount what happens in the dark. I'm not saying that your soul shouldn't long for the light, but don't discount the growth that can happen in the dark. My little Wyatt is only three, but when he was even littler than he is now, he would often cry out to me in the night, Mama! Mama! And each time I would turn on a little light, I would pick him up and I'd reassure him that I was there, that he wasn't alone. The other day I realized that he doesn't cry out anymore. He just walks right through the dark 
gets into bed and snuggles right up to me. <laughs> he doesn't turn on a light because he knows right where I am. He has confidence in the fact that I won't leave him alone in the dark. And we can have confidence in the fact that we know right where God is too. Even in the dark, he is right there with us. We are never, never alone. Satan wants us to be suspicious. He wants us to be discouraged in the dark, while God wants us to be dependent and draw us close to his heart. The enemy knows that it's difficult not to doubt the light of his truth when everything around us looks dark. But don't let Satan steal the blessing that God will bestow on you in the darkest parts of your life. You know, darkness was the perfect training ground for David's destiny. And those difficult places we so desperately want to be done with can become good training ground for us as well. In Kids Church, we've been talking about how every person is created for a purpose. Thank you, Jesus. And even the, in the dark, God can and will reveal his purpose for us. So today, let's choose to believe that there is a purpose in every season, even the ones that don't seem to make any sense, even the ones we really, really want to get out of. Today, let us ask God to help us see the dark as a training ground for our destiny. And instead of being discouraged or suspicious of his plan, let's lift up our praises to him like David did. Let's praise him for what he's doing in our lives, even when it's too dark to see. There's a beautiful old hymn that I love, and I thought about it when I was thinking about this truth of who God is and what he does in our life in the dark. It says, if we could see beyond today as God can see, if all the clouds should roll away, the shadows flee, or present griefs we would not fret, each sorrow we would soon forget, for many joys are waiting for you and me. If we could know beyond today as God doth know, why dearest treasures pass away and tears must flow, we know that darkness leads to light and dreary days will soon grow bright. Someday life's wrongs will be made right. Faith tells us so. If we could see, if we could know, we often say, but God in love, a veil doth throw across our way. We cannot see what lies before and so we cling to him the more. He leads us till this life is o'er. Trust and obey. He leads us till this life is o'er. Trust and obey. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you that it is through love that you make a way for us to grow in the dark. That you use the darkest times of our life to shape who we are becoming, to train us to live out your destiny. And I pray, God, that we would allow you to use those times for your purpose and your plan as you fulfill your purpose in us. I pray, God, that we wouldn't be desperate to get out of any season that you are using to shape us and to teach us and to make us more like you. Today, I thank you, God, for those dark times. And I pray just like David did, that we would praise you in the midst of them, that we would thank you for the plan that you have. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys and hope you have a wonderful day. Trust God in the dark.